everyone that you're joining us for Hope Today. It is such a joy and honor and a privilege for us to be in your living room, your bedroom, or wherever you are watching from to join us on this Friday. I'm here with Tom and Anna. And you know, as the weekend is approaching, it's a busy one. Today is Juneteenth, which is a holiday that celebrates, you know, slavery when the slaves all heard that they were free. And so we're celebrating freedom and it's Father's Day is coming up, Tom. Well, how about that? Well, uh, you know, I didn't know actually uh -huh. Father's Day is a Sunday. And uh, hello, Andrew and Tiffany and uh, Ashley, in case you didn't remember. But uh, many children in our society, you know, they don't have that loving father's embrace, those loving memories. And coming up, we're going to be having a great conversation with Jeff Kemp about the importance of his dad, your dad, and you. So I'm looking forward to that, guys. Oh, I hi. really am. That's going to be so good. Yeah, we're excited to talk about fatherhood because, dads, you have such an important role. And Tom, I know you've been a dad for a long time. Here's what I want to yes, know. Dad. So are there <laughs> things where you, when you were growing up, you were like, I'm never going to say that when I'm a dad. And uh, you mean, you thought, mean something my dad would have said? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my dad was, was great. I mean, my dad was, was a, a wonderful man of God. And, uh, you know, so I, I have a lot. I didn't have a lot to recover from. Let's oh, put it that right. way. That's you know, good. certainly there are some things that I did differently than my dad. And as we move on in generations and society changes a little bit, there's a little bit of different ways of sharing things or doing things. But, um, you know, I, I was like, hey, if I could be like him, I'll be I'll be just right on. <laughs> That's awesome. That's such a good dad. Yeah. yeah, I know. Shout out to all the dads out there. We are looking forward to celebrating you this weekend. Yes, and I have to say a big shout out to my dad. So I'm hoping to spend some time with him this weekend because one of his favorite groups are coming, the Ohio Players. So I actually, it's like a free event. So I'm oh, excited nice. to spend time with my dad. Yeah, and I just love you, dad, so much. And I just think with all the dads out there, we're just so grateful for all of you and what you do. And one thing I know my dad taught me that was said anything is possible. That was like the greatest piece of wisdom that he always told me. He's just like, go for your dreams and do it, go for it. So, yeah. Yeah, well, guys, awesome. well, you know, for, for me, it's, it's a little different this year because right. it's the first time without my dad, as he as uh, if you've been watching the show for a while, you know, I mentioned my dad passed away a couple of months ago. And, uh, but you know, I, I, as I think about that, I'm like, I'm, I'm okay. It's yeah. like he, I had him for a long time and he served the Lord his whole life. And so praise God for that. Well, we have an interesting verse related to that. It's actually the last verse in the Old Testament, Malachi 4, 6, and it says this, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Interesting verse, isn't it? Unusual verse. What do you think of that, yeah. Sydney? Well, can you break it down for us, Tom? Because <laughs> I would like you to like expound upon it. Because I do think it's a verse that we hear a lot of times, you know, in church and different things. But what does it really mean? Well, mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting that a curse will come if the hearts of the children and the fathers are not turned towards each other. And have we not seen that? Have we not seen that in our own land, in our own society, and in our in our world today? That uh, fathers need to be there and have their hearts open to their children and children hearts open to the to the father and uh, it's it's such a, a key thing that we can't you know we cannot ignore that and we see that uh, a curse comes upon our society when that's not there. Right, absolutely. And I think the encouragement that comes out of this scripture is when you look at this scripture in context, it's talking about the day of the Lord, like the end times. This is a, a prophecy, if I'm understanding it correctly, where God is going to start turning the hearts of fathers towards their children and children's hearts towards their fathers. That is good news for us who have that longing to see that happen in in our kids' lives, in the men that we love, um, that God is working in their lives. Even like if you're in a situation today where you just, maybe you feel like your husband is not totally fulfilling that role, just keep praying for him, keep respecting him, keep lifting him up before your children because God is working in his life and God is working in your kids' lives to be turning them towards each other and good, beautiful things come out of a man who begins to follow after God and really look to God the Father for the example of how he can be a loving father to his children. That's really good because I think just hearing about that when the fathers turn their hearts to their children, wow, what if we had a whole movement of fathers? <laughs> just do that and what would happen to our society? I really believe it would turn up 
side down because I know fatherlessness is such an issue. I mean, a lot of kids are out there, they're missing their dads, you know, wanting their dads to be a part. So I just think this is a, such a good conversation to have today, Tom, about the importance of fatherhood because yeah. it's critical. Yeah, it's going to be great. As, as, as we've been speaking about Father's Day being this Sunday, our next guest has a strong passion for leading and guiding men on their walk with the Lord. He's a former NFL player. His name's Jeff Kemp, and he's a current ambassador to the Fatherhood Commission. And he joins us now to help encourage men to be strong leaders with their families, as well as in the world. Jeff, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Hi, Sydney. Hello, Anna. Happy Juneteenth to all of you. Happy Father's Day. Sydney, I'd like to hear more about your dad. He sounds like a, a great guy, as was Tom's, and I'm sure Anna's. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to be with you. And that verse was powerful. Um, and I have a thought for it, and I'll let you uh, pick it up from here, Tom. Well, you know, uh, it, Jeff, uh, first I have to ask you something. You know, we are big Steeler fans around here, and you played in the NFL, <laughs> and I just have to know, like, what are your memories of coming to Pittsburgh, I mean, and playing our Steelers and, you know, visiting our fair city? Well, the steel curtain was no fun. Uh, <laughs> they had some really hard turf in that Three Rivers Stadium, and some great teams you know, all those Super Bowls. Uh, we've won some against Pittsburgh and lost a few. I don't remember a lot of the details, and at least I didn't get any concussions there. So that's good. <laughs> but uh, I loved my time in the NFL. It was never a time of security because I was mm -hmm. on the bubble, which means you're not sure if you're going to make the team or not. You might get traded. I started a year, and then they said thank you and traded me to the Niners. Same thing, traded me to Seattle. I learned that my identity is in Christ, not in my job, not in the NFL, not in being a, a, a quarterback. And I got discipled by some great Christian teammates and chaplains mm -hmm. and uh, my wife, uh, who was a fabulous Jesus pursuing partner during those years. Yeah, 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 so true, so true. Well, let me ask you about that verse uh, and, and your thoughts related to the, the verse in Malachi. Well, uh, I think Anna was right. She mentioned that there was a 400 year gap um, that was the last words of the Old Testament before uh, John, the, the, uh, John the Baptist would come and Jesus would come. And when we talk about the end times, really, as soon as Jesus came, the end times have begun. Uh, because now God's bringing to completion everything that he had planned through Abraham and his reconciliation effort with that family. And so that message says that the prophet will come and God, through the prophet, will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and children to the fathers. And the ultimate thing Jesus came to do, he's the ultimate one being spoken of, is to show us the father. Jesus came to show us what the heavenly father is really like. He told the story about the prodigal son and the legalistic, stuffy, rule-following older son and the father who was so gracious to jump off the porch and run to welcome back his rebellious, crazy son and also love his kind of rule following legalistic son. That's the picture of God that we need to get. And Jesus said, when I come, I will turn your hearts to that father and I'll turn his hearts to you and he will heal you. And that will make fathers be able to love and serve and train and guide their children with their heart as the goal, mm -hmm. not their behavior. Remember our faith is based on grace and that's the heart and identity not on performing some rules. So fatherhood's about relationships. It's the vertical with our heavenly father and the horizontal with the children that he gives to us. And if we don't have that, both the spiritual and the horizontal fathering, there's a curse upon the land, spiritually or in terms of depression, discouragement, gangs, trouble, little girls getting pregnant too early, sexual abuse, bullying in schools, kids that are lonely, suicide attempts, these things are all related to the lack of a dad and the partnership of a mom and dad in the life of a child. But this, this shows about hope. No one's disqualified. God turns bad things around. So I'm excited to talk about fathers, not just on Father's Day, 365, you guys. Every day is Father's Day if you have a kid. Yeah, you know, it is. And I, I, I know that, again, having a great father, and I, I've heard you talk about your father, a uh, former uh, congressman, uh, Jack Kemp and uh, ran for president. And I think uh, my father was a steel worker, but as you t speak, I hear some of the same things my father was like, an encourager, someone that was uh, consistent and was there. Isn't that interesting that 
it's, it's so much of what we think is important, the really important thing is to be that example, a godly example of a father in the, the situation God puts us. Well, the word is engaged. Um, you want to be there, you want to be engaged, and you want to have a relationship. If you have those foundational things, then a dad has a lot more credibility uh, to give a child their confidence and vision for their life, taking risks and stepping into the world, uh, developing character, figuring out how to handle relationships. Um, and one of the very biggest ones is the fact that you're a beloved son or daughter of God. You receive your identity. You don't go out there and earn it by being first string on the team or the first oboe in the orchestra uh, or the most popular person on Facebook. Identity is received through relationship with Heavenly Father and Jesus. It's not earned. And we've got that mixed up, mixed up in the world today. And a lot of dads are still trying to prove themselves to their dad. That's why I'm talking so much about the heavenly father relationship that heals everything so we can be good in the horizontal. And there's an amazing documentary, Show Me the Father, coming out, Sony Pictures, the Kendrick Brothers, June 10th. We could talk more about that, but it paints that picture of that amazing heavenly father who heals the broken earthly relationships of fatherhood. Jeff, when you talk about identity, what does a man need to hear today about how God views him? Oh man, Anna, uh, all of us little boys, <laughs> whether we're 50 or 60 or five or six, uh, are asking the question, do I have what it takes? Do I measure up? Am I a man? And so we need to hear from our father, you know what, I'm proud of you. I love you. I love the way you try. I love your character. Okay, uh, my son Keegan, he was shooting hoops with me when he was six years old in the backyard and he couldn't get the ball all the way up to the 10 foot rim. So it would hit the, the net or just the rim and never go in. And he was having fun because he was with me and he looked up at me at one point and said, Daddy, I'm good at the shooting part. I'm just not good at the making part. <laughs> he didn't beat himself up for performance because I was a relational dad that was proud of him regardless. I was spending time with him. So kids need to hear from their dad. I love you unconditionally. I love God unconditionally. I love your mom unconditionally. Even if you're divorced, you need to love the mom of your children, okay? And then they need to hear, you have what it takes. I believe in you. You have a great future. It's based in your relationship with God. You know, he'll, he's the one who'll bring out your talents and gifts and he'll paint the, the vision for your future. But I believe in you, okay? So dads paint the picture of the movie in a child's life not just the snapshot where they have acne and they're not popular and they just got grounded and they're not happy with themselves. Uh, everyone goes through those phases. Dad has to paint a picture of the future. And that's what God does, you know, uh, vision. Where there's no vision, people fall out of relationship and perish. Daddies need to give vision to their kids. My dad was amazing at this. I just love, Jeff, how you're just talking about that they have to paint a vision and how important it is just to love on their kids. And I just want to ask you, Jeff, if there's a father that's watching right now that maybe he's not close to his kids, maybe it's distant. He feels like he messed up because there's so many dads. I know even in my like family situation, there's so many family members. Dads are not present. They're not there. They're gone. We don't even know where they are. But what about that father that's like, I want to start a new relationship with my child I, or my adult son or my adult daughter. What would you say to that person today? Like how they can start and what are there any tools or any practical advice that you would give them you know just all, as they're going along their way in their journey i'm going to start with a story um but there is always hope because god's a god of turning bad things to good you know, i call them blitzes into touchdowns mm -hmm. all right uh my friend marvin charles grew up in the in the urban center of seattle uh didn't know his dad didn't really get raised by his mom. His grandparents raised him. He bounced around between homes. He, he fell into the lifestyle of the street. He was entrepreneurial. Unfortunately, it was in drugs and stuff like that. Um, with no good role model, Marvin drifted and became kind of a consumer of women, had a couple kids out of wedlock, okay, had a drug problem. When he went to treatment, kind of hitting the bottom, he found the only true answer in life, a relationship with Father God through Jesus Christ, who saved him and it radically changed Marvin and he got a vision that I need to be a dad. And so he ended up talking to his girlfriend of the time and they had a child together and he had some other children outside of that uh, relationship. And he said, let's get married. That's what God wants us to do. He'd seen it in the Bible. 
he hadn't seen it in the neighborhood or the culture. And Marvin followed the Bible, got some mentors, married Jeanette, and then he got discipled by some white business dudes, and he wasn't too happy with black with white guys at that point in his life. These guys were awesome friends. They weren't white or black, they were just believers. They mentored him along, and Marvin found his way through the labyrinth of government programs that keep many dads from their kids, okay, because of child support enforcement payments and such. And they didn't have a good dad role model. And Marvin has today mentored with his wife, Jeanette, 4,000 estranged fathers back into relationship with their kids. Some of them have gotten married, and many of them have found Jesus Christ. So here's a dad who missed it, had done it wrong. But God put his story back together in a better way than ever, and he's helping other dads. So the bottom line is this. Humility is the answer to your brokenness as a dad, both the hurt you feel from not having your dad there and the guilt you feel from not being in your kid's life. So humble yourself, ask God for forgiveness, ask God to refather you because he's perfect and he's your dad. And then you can go apologize to your kids and start anew. And I see many dads that have started over. Tomorrow can be better than today. You're not, you're not disqualified because of yesterday. We're all imperfect, read the Bible. Those are some jacked up people, but Jesus turns it around. That is so good. I love the fact that he was mentored. Marvin, you said he was mentored and then he went on to mentor multitudes and that, that's fantastic. We're gonna yeah, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back uh, talking more about fathers and how we can now proceed from, from understanding to what we can take as the next step. We'll be right back. Spending time with God is the most important aspect of our day. Through prayer, supplication, and reading God's Word, the Holy Spirit can play an active part in your life and reveal God's true purpose for you and your family. In his book, 100 Bible Verses Everyone Should Know by Heart, Robert J. Morgan shares real-life stories of how God changes lives through the power of memorizing Scripture. And now it's your turn to discover how God's Word can change your story and improve your walk of faith. You can live with renewed strength every day. Donate to Cornerstone Television Network and request 100 Bible Verses Everyone Should Know by Heart. To receive your copy, call 888-665-4483 with your gift of any amount or go to ctvn.org slash donate. We hope to encourage you one verse at a time. God bless you and thank you for your kind gift to Cornerstone Television. Well, we're back talking about Father's Day and fatherhood with Jeff Kemp. Jeff, I have to ask you, for fathers that are watching right now, they say, wow, you know, I've, I've done some things right, I've done some things wrong. How, do, how does a father evaluate what he's doing as a father, and how does he take positive steps to improve? Oh, that's a great question. The first thing you can do is some market research, and it's not too complicated. You simply ask your son or daughter, hey, <laughs> how's our relationship doing? And you could even say zero to 10, how's our relationship? And then maybe say, you know, maybe they'll say, I don't know, dad, four or five, don't get down on them and say, come on, it's better than that. Accept what they say and then say, well, what do you think would move it closer to a 10? And then you'll be hearing from each of your children who are different and want different styles of fathering, what they want, what they need, what they like, what they want you to keep doing, what they'd like you to stop doing, uh, now, you won't stop disciplining them if they say that, but you might start hugging them and kissing them and tell them you love them before you discipline them, right? Um, so you can ask your kids. Secondly, ask their mom. What guidance do you have for me? What, what do you see that I miss? I have gotten so much wisdom from my wife. I've, I, I would have made so many mistakes if I hadn't used my teammate, okay? So those are two really objective ones, Tom. Um, the Bible has much wisdom. Follow the Proverbs, okay? Mm -hmm. But I recommend get on the fatherhoodcommission.com website, look at some of the 100 different partners we have, find one like Manhood Journey or All Pro Dad. Um, Marvin Charles has a group called Dads. But find one that has maybe a newsletter or some videos, some digital content to start coaching yourself up. But the main thing is humility to ask the question, what could I do better to love you and, and be there for you as your dad? 
Right. Jeff, I think that's so amazing. I've never heard of that, of a father asking, like, evaluate me, how am I doing? Because I know that has to be based out of relationship because sometimes if it's going bad, it might, some things might come out that are hurtful. But I just wanted to know from your personal experience when you had that evaluation with your children, what were some of the things that came up that really helped you to change and become a better father? Well, I now have grown sons, okay? We have four sons. They're all married. I'm a grandpa now. Uh, being a grandpa is a lot easier than being a dad. Uh, not as much pressure and responsibility. It's like utopia. But here, here is, when I mentioned humility earlier on, I really feel like all of life hinges on either pride, which makes us divide and fall the wrong way, or humility, which makes us unite and bring things together in the right direction. And I have been learning from humility that I have been an over-coaching, over-mentoring dad. Secondly, I have a problem of thinking that I'm unselfish in the big things. You know, I've been in ministry for many years and I excuse my selfishness in the little things. Like the night where my son um, said, dad, can you make sure you don't eat the appetizer cornbread on the table at this restaurant? Because our son, Jack, he was three years old at the time, he won't eat his normal dinner if he gets a bunch of cornbread. So I don't want you eating it to make him want it. Well, I was so hungry that I kind of shielded little Jack and snuck a piece of cornbread. And then I had another piece and Kyle's like rolling his eyes at my wife saying, what is up with dad? After the trip was over, this little family vacation, he, uh, he said, mom, I don't understand dad. He'll spend like an hour in the, in, the, in the Bible in the morning. But at the end of the day, it's all about him. That was a, that was a javelin to my heart. My character had been damaged, uh, questioned by the person I care the most about, my son. So you know what I did? I didn't disqualify myself. I didn't sulk. I, I said, God, show me what is true. And I learned I am selfish in some personal convenience things. So I called him up on the phone. I said, Kyle, I wanna ask your forgiveness. I did this, it was stupid, I didn't apologize. And I even learned that I'm selfish in lots of other ways. And if you see any other ways, tell me. You wouldn't believe how improved my relationship with that son became. We've been talking way more. He's been more humble and open to me. So I tell every dad, humility and apology are your greatest strength and asset. You need to be strong in God, not in your own personality. You'll make mistakes, use it as a chance to apologize. It's just like a blitz in football. It looks dangerous, like a crisis, but it's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. wow. That's such good advice. I feel like that humility is perfect for the season of parenting teenagers because they keep yeah. us very humble. Can you speak to dads about how they can stay connected to their teenager? Because oftentimes that is when a kid begins to pull away from their parent. Sure. Well, teenagers are in that awkward spot where uh, the family is super important to them because they feel conditional judgment and critique out there at school and in the world and especially in social media, which is brutal on girls and brutal on boys, okay? Um, but they, by the same token, they want to establish their independence and move away and not act dependent on mom and dad. So they're going to be kind of rascally to you. That's just the way it is. They're not going to come home and say, thank you for being wonderful parents. You're not going to get any of that until they're 26 and have their own kids. Okay, so the number one thing is humility that shows them you're not perfect and you weren't perfect and you went through struggles. So don't be afraid to tell some dumb story about yourself or some insecure story when you were a teen at the dinner table or in a car ride. Don't expect to look them in the eye and give them a lecture. Take them on a walk, talk in the car, and then ask them what they're interested in and show interest in what they're interested in. Because if you don't show interest in what they're interested in, they don't think you really are interested in them. So look to them on their terms, build relationship by saying, hey, let's do something together. What do you want to do? Okay. And then tell stories about yourself that show you're vulnerable. You're not on a pedestal. You weren't perfect. You face some of this stuff and make yourself more safe to talk to. Okay. Those are keys. Now I took my boys to breakfast once a week when they were juniors and seniors in high school, the, the oldest kid would get breakfast with dad. And then at 13, I took each of the boys on a father-son trip to talk about peer pressure, sex, marriage, porn. Um, and then at 18, I had a welcome to manhood trip for each son. And I helped men would come and tell stories of manhood. Those are rites of passage. Uh, but the breakfast once a week, that's pretty key. And time with them walking or in the car, that's pretty key. Ask them questions and tell them stories. Yeah. 
Boy, that is so, such good wisdom, Jeff. Would you take a moment? We just have about a minute, minute and a half left in this uh, part of the show. Could you just uh, pray for those fathers out there? Well, I, I will. And I just want to remind all the dads that September 10th, there's an amazing documentary that tells the reconciliation story of an NFL player who didn't get raised with a dad and an NFL coach who mentored that young man. And Dylan McCullough and the coach was Sherman Smith. And uh, at age 37, Dylan, uh, or, um, Dylan found out that Sherman Smith, who'd mentored him, was his actual birth dad. And neither of them knew it. Wow. It's a picture of God. Wow. So that's Show Me the Father. You can find it at our website, um, which is the uh, fatherhoodcommission.org. Father, we need you, and I pray for every dad to find you, find healing, and open his heart to his child. Bless them. They count. They matter. Encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, Jeff Kep, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for, the, for all that important things, especially the uh, ouch things of... Uh, uh, being selfish in our own personal comforts. I, I, can, I can identify, believe me. But uh, we'll have all your information uh, linked to our website as well. So uh, ctvn.org. Jeff, uh, have a happy Father's Day. And to all the other dads out there and the moms who help us do it. Amen, amen, that's great. Well, yeah, I identified with, you know, yeah, you can do the big things and all, have all the, the Jesus talk and everything, but are you selfish in those little mm -hmm. personal things? Ooh, that was an ouch. Yeah. That, yeah. I just have to say, one of the things I remember best about my dad is that he was so unselfish in that he could work until midnight. He worked that late shift and then he would get up in the morning with me and have breakfast with me before school. And even if I wasn't like engaging in conversation with him, he was still sitting there. And so dads, do your thing, have breakfast with your kids. It's an easy way to engage. It is so important for dads to be engaged and we just wanna thank you for being engaged and we just wanna thank all of you for your partnership and your support for Cornerstone Television Network because if it wasn't for your financial support, we wouldn't be able to have hope today. So would, if you would consider, if this has been a blessing to you to give to Cornerstone Television Network so we can continue to bring great guests like Jeff Kemp along so we can talk about important issues like fatherhood because we're all about pouring into you so you can be all that God has called you to be. And I just wanna encourage all the dads out there. We love you, we're so grateful for you. You are the reason that we're here. Well, half of the reason and our moms too. <laughs> but we just wanna encourage you to be humble, to seek Jesus and to love like him so you can raise your kids up in the way that they should go. Have a great Father's Day.